Let's look at the equilibrium constant, but first let's explore a general equation. So we're just going to generalize that the reactants are A and B, and they have coefficients that are the lower case of each of those letters. This is an equilibrium reaction, so it goes both in the forward and the reverse reaction. And it has products C and D with similar coefficients. If we write the law of mass action, and this is just a way to say that we're writing the products with raised to the coefficients in the chemical reaction and divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to the coefficient in the chemical reaction. This implies that the ratio between the concentration of the reactants and products is a constant. And that constant is known as our equilibrium constant K. We are going to look at this as if it's a unitless number because the units do get quite complicated using the different um, coefficients in our balanced chemical reaction as the exponents. Now do notice that when we're writing our law of mass action, this is different from when we looked at kinetics and we had to figure out the orders experimentally. For the law of mass action, those exponents are equal to the coefficients in front of our balanced chemical re reaction. It is always the products over the reactants. So it'll always be products, the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So if we look at a chemical reaction where we're taking dinitrogen pentoxide and forming nitrogen dioxide and oxygen, we would write our equilibrium constant expression by taking the products raised to the coefficient from our balanced chemical reaction. We take the concentration of oxygen, the other product, and there's no coefficient, so it would just be to the first power, which we typically do not write, divided by the concentration of our reactants raised to the coefficient for the reactants. And so this equilibrium constant expression says that these concentrations are equal to a constant, which is shown as K. This is our equilibrium constant expression. So what does this K value imply? So our equilibrium constant, if we think about it, if we have a value that is a, a large number, larger than one, and the two greater than signs mean much larger than one, Okay. That means that at equilibrium, the value for the products is going to be larger. So that means that more products are going to be in our reaction than reactants. So this means that the products are favored in this particular chemical reaction because we have an equilibrium constant value larger than one. Okay. If we have an equilibrium constant value that is smaller than one, this means that the reactants are favored. So our value for the products is going to be smaller than the value for the reactants, the concentration of the reactants. This means that the more reactants are present, our position of equilibrium favors the reactants. Here's a practice for you to try. Write your equilibrium constant expression and predict whether or not the reactants are favored or the products are favored. Pause the video while you determine your answer. 
To write our equilibrium constant expression, it is going to be the concentration of our products, so sulfur trioxide raised to the coefficient, divided by the concentration of our reactants, so sulfur dioxide raised to its coefficient, times the concentration of oxygen. And because there's no coefficient, it's one, we typically do not write that. Now, if we look at our K value, we have a positive exponent, 8 times 10 to the 25th. This is very large. So this means that it favors the products. There's going to be much more of the products formed than the reactants that are left. If we look at our second example, again, it's going to be the products in the numerator raised to the coefficient over the concentration, remember brackets mean concentration, of the reactants raised to the coefficient. So our oxygen would be squared. And because our exponent is small, our value is much less than 1. So we would have 16 zeros and a 3, 0 0.16 zeros and a 3. That means that it's a very small number, which the pro that don't have much of the products, so it favors the reactants. So this tells us that our first example is going to go um, towards completion, towards the products. There's going to be a lot of products. Our second example is going to have more of the reactants present in our reaction mixture and not much of the products.